Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the daily current affairs analysis of December 6, 2023. In this video, we are going to discuss the important news articles from Hindu newspaper as well as Indian Express newspaper. Along with that, previous year's questions are also going to be discussed. Let's get into the discussion of this. The first news is regarding conference of parties 28. From 3-4 days, we are discussing about this particular aspect. Before discussing the contents of these news articles, let me uh, revise the uh, things which we have studied from the past 3-4 days and what are the initi initiations that have been taken there and what are the funds uh, uh, that were in the discussion, all these aspects, let me give you guys a revision. The first aspect is Green Credit Initiative. This initiative is taken by India. See, we already have a carbon credit kind of this kind of initiation at the broader level, at the country level. So now this idea has been pushed for individual level. This credit, green credit will be given to individual personalities or for that matter, a community in a region for a private sector or an enterprises. See, whoever that takes a decision that takes steps in the direction of protecting environment, protecting climate, then the credit facility, that credits will be given to that particular individual or the community. So this initiative is to uh, push, is to encourage individual personalities to work towards climate change protection this is one uh, initiative we have talked about and we talked about loss and damagement and who are going to receive loss and damagement climate vulnerable countries island nations which are directly affected by climate change activities those countries are going to receive fund through loss and damagement and we next we talked about the green climate fund and here uh, developing countries and emerging economies these countries are going to receive fund because these emerging economies they have huge potential it means that their economy is getting bigger and they are going to have growth for next 20 or 25 years for that growth it means that there will be more carbon emissions so the world leaders they have decided that we need a methodology with the help of this methodology, there should be economic growth. At the same time, there should be a low carbon emission also. So how do you do it? You have to have a proper technology. You have to have a, a proper funding also. Then only green development happens. So in order to push for green development, the some of the countries, they have decided to fund. They decided to help these countries through green climate fund. And here, that one aspect you need to focus here is, the developed countries they are going to fund the developing or the emerging economies this is regarding green climate fund and we talked about climate uh, investment fund also this is an individual initiative taken by uh, united arab Emirates, that is a host nation and uae is going to contribute 30 billion dollars as a climate investment fund these are the four funds and initiatives we talked about first day and the next day we talked about a pledge we talked about another initiation that initiation is a energy efficiency pledge and what exactly this energy efficiency pledge this pledge talked about whatever the en uh, renewable energy capacity of this kind of countries that has to be tripled by the 2030 if india is having renewable energy capacity of 50 gigawatts then by 2030 it has to be 150 gigawatts initially india agreed to the pledge but later india did not endorse this pledge the reason was initially it was only regarding renewable energy but later even the another clause has been added that was regarding fossil fuels so and uh, according to this uh, fossil fuel there should be a phase out of usage of fossil fuel for energy production but india it is very difficult we are in a developing stage and our economy is going to reach 7 trillion dollars by 2030 so we cannot directly go for a fo elimination of fossil fuel or phasing out of fossil fuel in our country it will take a lot of time and if we does that it is going to affect our economic prospectors so for that reason india did not endorse this energy efficiency pledge al almost around 180 countries they have signed it they have agreed for it but india and china they have taken a step back and now moving on let's talk about the contents of today's newspaper article there are three aspects have been mentioned here the first aspect is gst that is global stock take what exactly the global stock take is see uh, uh, during paris agreement in 2015 uh, there are some decisions have been taken and even intended national determined contribution indc indc is uh, countries voluntarily they put some target that we are going to achieve this these are the intended 
uh, national determined contribution so we decided that after some years maybe four years five years we will revive these uh, targets national targets whether it is voluntary targets or the targets by under Parli paris agreement and we will analyze it so this is called global stock tech stock global stock tech is nothing but whatever the targets we have already agreed we are going to assess it whether we have achieved it or not so today's newspaper it is all about global stock tech usually as i told you stock take that should uh, that must be on the analyzation factor but uh, what is happening here is even under the global stock take uh, um, talks also there is a push for the phasing out of fossil fuels see there is a reason behind this also there this was not a agenda of discussion for gst what happens two days ago india pushed for an idea that is we mentioned about green climate fund so india told that we need to analyze a global stock tech we need to analyze this green climate fund also see uh, by analyzing this we will get to know the failure of developed countries also because uh, under green climate fund these developed countries they have to fund this they have to give some money to it but they didn't give the target was 100 billion dollar per year but if you look at it on the whole the total collection was around 80 billion dollar so what india told is we will include this also under gst global stock stock tech we analyze the failure of developed countries so to counter that what developed countries are doing is under the same gst they've added another class that is facing out of fossil fuels see they know that it is very difficult for india and india knows that these developed countries already they are almost towards the green technology only because they are using nuclear uh, technology nuclear power plants for the energy production and they are going for uh, wind and solar uh, facilities see their dependence on coal or fossil fuels is extremely low so this pledge or this particular new class it is not going to affect the developed countries but it is going to affect the china it is going to affect india if you observe carefully under the ambit of this uh, gst that is global stock take action and the counter action is going on action is from india side india told that we are going to analyze the uh, failed uh, initiatives of developed countries now developed countries is pushing under the same uh, gst they are pushing that we need to face out fossil fuel zone uh, or fossil fuels uh, aspect see this is going on here this is this has been mentioned in the article this is the first aspect and the second aspect it talks about a particular report that report is released by world meteorological organization and what is the report the name of the report is global climate 2011 to 2020 a decade of acceleration so the let's talk about what exactly it has been mentioned in the uh, this particular uh, report see it has been mentioned that there are two positive aspects are there and there are two negative aspects have been mentioned here let's talk about positive aspects here see last decade is considered as 2001 2011 to 2021 is considered as the warmest decade even though it was a uh, warmest decade in the recorded history but if you look at the number of death it, number of death were extremely low the reason behind is the uh, development in the technology especially the early warning system so it helped people to save lives and also forecasting weather forecasting and the disaster management activities these help to mitigate the deaths so these are the positive aspects and along with that another aspect is even the ozone we can see the development we can see the uh, recovery of ozone that also been mentioned in this report and negative aspect here is if you look at the glacier around the world around one meter per year the glacier is getting thinner and thinner especially in the last decade for almost 10 years we have reduced the uh, we have uh, we, we can see the reducement of glaciers around the world this is one negative aspect and another negative aspect is these kind of glaciers are giving away are, are the reasons for the glacial outbursts, uh, outburst this is what happening around the world and even if you look at Uttarakhand rock avalanche even that was triggered by uh, this kind of activity only the, the reduction of glaciers especially in the Himalayan region so these are the things that has been mentioned in this report so you don't have to remember these many details you can one aspect is you need to remember the report who is releasing the report the name of the report is decade of acceleration this is released by world meteorological organization and the uh, it's superficial information like uh, the number of deaths due to the climate change it is reducing because of improvement in technology this aspect you can mention in in your answer 
like how early warning system weather forecasting and better disaster management it is directly affecting it is directly saving the lives of the people so these are the things in the positive aspects of uh, scientific development or technological development you can mention as one of the points and also it shows that ozone is also recovering these are the positive points if you want you can uh, you can use these things in your answers but what you have to remember in this year is the name of the report and the uh, organization that is released the report these are two things but along with that let me give you guys background information regarding world meteorological organization also so these these kind of international organizations are also important from exam perspective see this was established in 1950 before world meteorological organization we had a international meteorological organization so around 1945 uh, and 46 we had a convention after this convention this was translated into world meteorological organization this wmo this is one among the specialized agencies of united nations organization the headquarters is in geneva switzerland and currently there are 187 countries see there are three aspects you need to remember here with respect to world meteorological organization it has three major programs the first program is world weather watch and what exactly it does it it does monitoring weather coordination weather condition it is like forecasting it is early warning system these kind of activities will be handled by world weather watch and the second program is world climate program it monitors climate change uh, like global warming all these activities and the third is atmospheric research and environment program and it usually research on ozone diplomat depletion these kind of atmospherical researches even if this is not very difficult to uh, remember see meteorology it means that it is related to weather and climate see weather is like uh, the change in uh, temperature in a very short span of time the rainfall patterns all these this includes in the weather so one thing is weather for a longer time for 10 years 20 years then become it becomes climate so world weather watch definitely it should come under meteorology only climate program yes it has to be under meteorology only now the third aspect is atmospheric research and environment program along with the weather and climate watch we are going to have atmospheric research also environmental program also these are three major programs of world meteorological organization and let's talk about previous year question with respect to this topic this question was asked in 2018 question was momentum for change climate neutral now is an initiative launched by four options are given here inter ipcc that is intergovernmental panel on climate change this is not uh, unep united nations environment program secretary this is not unf triple c secretary it actually answer is this is one right one and finally world meteorological organization this is not the answer see these are the googly questions where you it is very difficult to go in deep to remember all these things but it this was uh, this might have been in news that year that's the reason maybe it was coming in news again and again maybe india might have given some statement statement with regarding to this that's the reason it might have come into the question uh, come into the examination so if anything that is coming again and again see if we look at the cop 25 the green pledge is in discussion so these kind of uh, uh, news which is in discussion and if we see editorials on those particular initi uh, initiatives then that becomes important so uh, still it is not very easy to answer these kind of questions is a tough ones if you ask me but still you should be aware of it Uh, cop if you take cop 25 you should be aware of the initiate in, initiatives india has taken and you should be aware of those aspects which are uh, coming in discussion again and again those are the things you need to focus from the exam perspective let's move to the next topic next topic is regarding economic weaker section see the news article it has been mentioned that the high court of delhi it has given a statement it has made an observation it has told delhi government that we have a economic weaker section reservation under this reservation the criteria the uh, uh, the financial criteria was 1 lakh if the parents income is less than 1 lakh then the children of those parents they get reservation in education institution now this 1 lakh it has been increased to 5 lakh rupees by high court of delhi this is what it has been mentioned in this article but you should be aware of economic weaker section uh, reservation this concept also low so let me give you guys background information also along with this uh, content of this article let's get into the discussion of this see uh, we have a right to education act under the right to education act it is mandatory for private educational institution to provide 25% of their seats to the candidates who belong to economic weaker section category 
and it is for private school and for government school you know that education is free for everybody so uh, i'll talk about right to education also some other time but as of now let me stick on to economic weaker section only so this is the provision we have now uh, this is what government has mandated for private school so under this the criteria for economic weaker section was 1 lakh per year as annum 1 lakh per annum income that was considered as a criteria for admission under RTE 25% seat reservation. Now court has taken a uh, decision that see it is very difficult even if you look at the minimum wage price it is going to cross 1 lakh rupees uh, in our country. So criteria has been changed criteria has been extended to 5 lakh rupees per annum. This is the news that has been mentioned here but let me give you guys background information regarding economic weaker section also. This economic weaker section reservation is given under the 103rd constitutional amendment. So, reservation is given in two categories, one is jobs and another one is uh, education. So, you can avail reservation in two categories, jobs and education. And if you look at the uh, reservation, it is 10% of total number of seats. See, don't get confused here. Under the Right to Education Act, it is 25 for the private education institution. This is different and this is different. This is for the jobs in central and state government and this is for the higher education 10 percent and the 25 percent in private schools it is for the, it is under the right to education act so these things these two uh, things don't get confused so another aspect here is see it, it even in the dpsp directive principles of state policy under article 46 it has been mentioned that it is a duty of state government it is a duty of for that matter the state uh, to protect the education and economic interest of weaker section of the society under this provision this particular amendment has been made to the constitution see we already have a reservation for sc category st category and obc category and these are given on the basis of social uh, backwardness and and the educational backwardness now the reservation has been given under the economic backwardness and those people who are not getting reservation under SCST or OBC only they can avail the reservation under economically weaker section category and it enables both central government as well as a state government to provide reservation under AWS category and let's see the uh, constitutional amendments with respect to this uh, reservation there are two articles you need to remember here is article 15 and article 16 article 15 talks about reservation for economically weaker sector for education in educational institution and article 16 it talks about economic reservation uh, talked about reservation for economic weaker section for job these are two things you need to remember Article 15 talks about uh, education, reservation in education. Article 16 talks about reservation in job opportunities. And let's see previous year question with respect to this topic. Uh, this question was asked in 2020. There are two statements I have given here. Uh, the constitution of India defines its basic structure in terms of federalism, secularism, fundamental rights and democracy. No, there is no proper definition regarding basic structure in our constitution. The constitution of India provides for judicial review to safeguard uh, citizens' liberties to preserve idea on which constitution is based. Even constitution of India it does not provide the idea of judicial re review. The answer is D, neither one or two. Let's move to the next topic. Next topic is regarding uh, Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act. Before getting to the discussion of article, let's cover the geographic, uh, geography aspect of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir, we, uh, a part of Jammu and Kashmir is with India, a part with is uh, Pakistan and a part is occupied by China. The part which is with India is distinguished between Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. After abrogation of Article 370 happened, the statehood has been revoked. Now, uh, Kash Jammu and Kashmir and the Ladakh are separate union territory. And this is the park occupied Kashmir. This region is, you can see here. And this is Gilgit Baltistan region. Here it is. And Siachen Glacier is here. And this is Saksham Valley. This Saksham Valley has given to China by Pakistan. And Aksai Jin, this is conquered by China during 1962 war. This is the geographical perspective of Kashmir. Let's get into the discussion. Let's get into the what exactly it has been mentioned in this article. See, this article talks about Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act. This Reorganization Act was passed in 2019. After this uh, act has been passed, 
the article 370 has been abrogated the special status for jammu and kashmir has been removed now jammu and kashmir is like any other indian territory jammu and kashmir the statehood has been revoked and now they are union territory L ladakh is a separate union territory jammu and kashmir is a separate union territory and the total number of uh, seats for jammu and kashmir assembly is fixed at 107 and out of this 107 27 24 seats are fixed for park occupied kashmir and it is these 24 seats are usually vacant and along with that seats are reserved for sc and st uh, uh, with regard to proportion of their po population in the region and also there is a provision for lieutenant governor he can nominate two me women members if their representation is very less in the assembly so this is what mentioned under jammu and kashmir recognition act of 2019 now an amendment has been addressed to this particular act and this amendment is getting discussed in the parliament and opposition members are objecting to this amendment they are saying this see this particular act the abrogation of article 370 is in supreme court the judiciary the discussion is going on in that so making amendment to this particular act this goes against the uh, judiciary and the judicial conduct so opposition members are taking uh, they are raising their voice against these amendments and let's see what exactly the amendments are this jammu and kashmir recognition amendment bill of 2013 it is going to nominate two kashmiri pandits into the legislation the kashmiri migrants who have left the valley in 1990s uh, because of altercations so they are going to get uh, nom uh, two members are going to be nominated into the uh, kashmir assembly under this amendment and also one member from POK is also going to be admitted. So these are the reservation, these are the new changes have been done with respect to Jammu and Kashmir assembly and this amendment is getting discussed on the floor of the houses that is mentioned in this article. See but you need to add, you need to analyze this uh, issue in deeper. Why there is a opposition for this amendment? There is a political reason behind it. See, usually Jammu is a very significant Hindu population and Kashmir has a very significant Muslim population. And in the Jammu region, BJP has a very strong control over it. Now the seats of the Jammu has increased to around 40 plus now, maybe 42, uh, somewhere around number of seats have been increased. And even in Kashmir, uh, Kashmir has a total 47 around, I, I, I don't remember the exact number of seats, but understand this concept. here. BJP has a control in Jammu and in Kashmir, BJP wants the National Conference, the Mehbooba Mufti, Omar Abdullah, their control, they want to reduce their control in Kashmir region. In order to re reduce their control, BJP is trying to curb their political power there. And BJP puts allegation on uh, uh, Omar Abdullah, Mehbooba Mufti that these political parties, uh, these leaders, they are going to support this extremist in the valley region and they are going to give, uh, they are going to create trouble for the uh, innocent people there. So in order to curb that, we need to reduce their political power and how do you do that? It is by a very uh, tactical move, you are reducing the influence of these political parties in, in, in this region. Now to, now if you look at it, two migrant uh, Kashmiri Pandits will be having re representation. One POK, Park Occupied Kashmir, Kashmir member is also going to be represented in the Kashmir Valley. By making this, the representation or the control over these political, traditional po political parties of Kashmir, they can be reduced. And BJP, the uh, since BJP is very stronghold in Jammu, it can control the entire state. So this is a political move behind it. So that, that's the reason opposition parties are not happy with the uh, changes or the reservation that is going on in the region. So this is more of political in nature, but you just understand what exactly this particular amendment is talking about. You All you have to remember is Article 370 abrogation happened in uh, 2019 under uh, Jammu and Kashmir Recognition Act of 2009. So under that 107 seats are there. Now amendment has been made to give representation, to give uh, reservation to the uh, migrant, the Kashmiri Pandits and also uh, uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir, one person from Pakistan occupied Kashmir and also two women reservation are also going to be given if there is inadequate representation. These are the aspects on a broader level you need to remember. I don't think these kind of uh, the amendments, these kind of questions with respect to one particular state are going to ask in examination. But just idea, have an idea, just know that how the political ideology works here. Uh, but you need to keep in, you need to see Jammu and Kashmir from the national security perspective. Yes, there there were questions uh, in mains examination from that perspective rather than political perspective. Let's see a uh, previous year question with respect to Jammu and Kashmir. The banning of jamaat e islami in Jammu and Kashmir brought into focus the role of uh, overground workers in uh, assisting terrorist organization. Examine the role played by uh, 
overground uh, workers in assisting terrorist organization in insurgency affected areas discuss the measures to neutralize the influence of ogws this question was asked in 2019 let's move to the next topic next topic is regarding india and kenya relationship the president of kenya is visiting india and india has announced 250 million line of credit to the kenya in agricultural sector and some of the uh, initiations are also being supported both the sides this is the news that has been mentioned here but uh, let's cover kenya from geography perspective and also let me give you guys background information with regarding india and kenya relationship let's see the geography perspective of kenya kenya is located in the, the continent of africa especially uh, uh, near the horn of africa here you can see horn of africa and the, let's see the neighboring countries somalia uh, ethiopia south sudan uganda and another what important water body is lake victoria and tanzania in the south and indian ocean as a maritime boundary here so this is the geographical aspect of kenya and you can see equator passes through kenya zero degree uh, this thing and uh, let's see we are uh, relationship with kenya see we india and kenya we are a maritime neighbors and we have a very robust very robust and uh, multifaceted partnership are we have a very strong relationship with kenya we have a very friendly relationship with kenya see uh, our relationship whether it is a trade link or the commercial link this goes back to almost uh, uh, two or three centuries back from the since the 17th century we are having that uh, connection especially when britishers came to india they if they when they wanted infrastructure development there the indians were uh, taken to that kenya uh, for the infrastructure development and the people of these indian ori origins they have uh, uh, assimilated with the uh, local people and now they are considered as a 44th tribe of uh, kenya so it means that even kenyan society have accepted people of indian origin as one among them so this shows that goodwill gesture between indian communities and then the kenyan community and india and kenya they have signed the trade agreement in 1991 and both the countries have given a most favored nation status for each other and later in 2016 our relationship has further increased the sector of our defense sector trade sector and even developmental assistance so our relationship is getting stronger and stronger even for the india's uh, permanent membership in united nations organization kenya is supporting india and india is the second largest investor in kenya and there are 60 major Indian companies, they are investing their money in Kenya and it, it's not restricted to one or two sectors. In various sectors, Indian investment is going on in Kenya. Kenya is, has also economic potential. So India wants to uh, take use of, take advantage of this potential. And another aspect is, see, Kenya can act as a gateway to the uh, Central African countries. So Kenya plays very important role and you know that Africa is very uh, rich in mineral resources whether it is petroleum resources or uh, any other uh, mineral resources so in order to extract these mineral resources we need a friendly relationship with these countries so Kenya plays very important role in that and we also have a double taxation avoidance agreement with Kenya in 1989 only and usually if you look at the import and export uh, the, the, the value of import and export is uh, pretty less only but but the thing is we have a huge potential in future and especially the mineral resources and uh, rare earth elements these are going to help india in future and even for the nuclear fuel if you look at the sudan and all they have a rich uranium resources so india needs to have a very strong and deeper relationship with these countries right now our export uh, india's uh, export from kenya to india they are restricted to agriculture products only and if you look at that India's the product India export to Kenya it usually petroleum oils and uh, the bit uh, oil obtained by bituminous minerals and motorcycles paper sugars food processing machines these are going to India usually export these kind of things to Kenya and India is significant development partner for Kenya India is offering financial assistance India is giving a loan scholarship to the student and even it is gifting advanced medical e equipment India is uh, expanding its footprints in kenya because if india is not active china is going to fill that vacuum china is already very strong in the african continent in order to counterbalance the chinese activities india is also uh, taking its steps in that direction see the way china handles relationship with african countries and the way india handles it is completely different so somewhere india has that goodwill uh, among many uh, african countries and especially if we think of Kenya, along with India, United States of America, it is also working to have a greater relationship to uh, strengthen the, to deepen the relationship with Kenya. 
Let's see question on this topic. Discuss India's emerging relationship with Kenya and its significance for Africa and India itself. Let's move to the next topic. Next topic is, uh, it has been mentioned in text and context piece, Pradhan Mantri Matya Sampad Yojana. Here it has been mentioned that the number of jobs that has created under Pradhan Mantri Matya Sampad Yojana is around 45 lakhs. So this is the news that has been mentioned, but uh, we need to be aware of this particular scheme also. Government initiative, government schemes are important from exam perspective. So let me give you guys background information regarding uh, Pradhan Mantri Matya Sampad Yojana. See this initiate is to bring a blue revolution. See, we are focusing on doubling the fisherman's income. We had a plan, we, we are focusing on agriculture also doubling the farming income. In the same way, we are focusing on also fishery sector also to increase the production to double the farmer's income also. And this is one among the initiatives under Atma uh, Nirbhar Bharat. And what exactly this does? Usually it gives financial assistance, a proper credit facilities will be given. It gives insurances, insurance facilities. And as we have a credit, uh, Kisan credit card, the similar kind of arrangement has been made to the fishermen also. They can also go for an institutional credit facility with the help of Kisan credit card facility. And government has a target of additional 70 lakh tons to increase the fish production in our country and it is uh, the implementation period is for five years from 2020 to 2025 and we are having a positive development with the help of uh, this particular scheme Matthi Sampada scheme and it is helping fishermen it is also helping fishing sectors also fishing, fishing, fishing sector and also it is giving credit facility even to have a uh, equipments uh, that are going to help for a fishing activity Let's see previous year question with respect to fisheries. This question was asked in 2018, defining blue revolution and explain the problems and strategies for pisciculture development in India. Uh, this is it for the day guys. This PDF is available in Netbook Study Telegram channel. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to Telegram channel also. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Sorry for the dis disturbance. A lot of noise was there in background. I could not able to control it. So uh, I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Thank you for listening.